Avast ye adventurers, welcome to a mythical quest that will take you across a grandiose landscape. I'm gonna, uh, you know what, we're gonna just drop that. Um, uh, hi, by the way, welcome to Citanium Mine. Uh, we're gonna be talking about an Elder Scrolls game on this show, and uh, it's not the ones that I normally talk about. It's uh, Daggerfall. It's Elder Scrolls 2. Remember that? Probably not. To be honest with you, I really didn't touch Arena or Daggerfall uh, as, as a general rule. Uh, they were just a little too old for me to get into. And there are certain limitations that those older games have in terms of the way they play. It's not just the graphics and the sound design with the chip music that have a tendency to throw me off. But it's literally that the user interface and the control scheme feels very archaic. So it was hard for me to actually get into those. Uh, anything before Morrowind seems a little bit difficult. And, you know, even Morrowind is a little archaic when you look at it now. But Daggerfall had a little bit of a facelift in recent years with the Unity version, where the game gets remade with some more modern hardware, although it still feels like an old RPG. Um, it does look a lot better than the original did. What they had to do, though, is since they're still using the original game, um, everything is still sprites, right? Like all the enemies and the landscape and all those elements, it, it, it's all still basically sprites. But the sprites look more like a watercolor painting version of the sprites from the original game, which would have been done in like that old bit style back in the day. So it looks a lot nicer. And then they basically created certain animations when creatures are attacking you and certain animations when you thrust your sword or something like that. So... You know, it, it feels a little bit easier for a modern audience, I think, to actually experience it. When I say I played Daggerfall, I should really say I attempted to play Daggerfall. Because what I found was that even though it did look pretty good, the technical limitations are what really held me back from enjoying it. Daggerfall starts off in a very Elder Scrolls fashion. You were taking a boat to this mythical land of Daggerfall, and then a storm whips up, and you get thrown from the ship, boat breaks apart, you pull yourself into this cave, and think that you're all but dead, because there's no way back out until you see this corridor that's leading out of the cavern. And thus... Your main mission is established. Uh, you have a quest from the Emperor, and you need to get on to it. But before we can do that, we have to create our character. And the character creation tools in this are just as robust, I think, as other Elder Scrolls games. The races that you can pick from, and what they're good at, and the kinds of stats that you have available to you. Very much in the same vein as later Elder Scrolls games. And very interestingly enough, you will also see the thing where your skills with certain things improve as you do them. And then... When you go to rest, you, in very much the same way Morrowind works, will level up if you've achieved enough points in certain skills. You have your primary skills, your secondary skills, etc. So Morrowind is very similar to this, except Morrowind was done in like a, an actual 3D landscape, where Daggerfall was definitely working on a sprite-based, like, old-school, almost like your Wolfenstein 3D sort of look. That's okay, really, because I think what they wanted to establish beyond the basic mechanics of how you advance in the game is the idea that this world is epic. To give you an idea of the scale of Daggerfall, let me give you a couple numbers. Morrowind had a size of 16 kilometers of playable space. 
Skyrim. Remember Skyrim and how big everyone thought Skyrim was? It had a size of 37 kilometers. Okay. Daggerfall had a map size of 161,600 kilometers. That's more. The game was huge. And it even used something that I think is kind of fascinating for the time, procedural generation. The point is that if you wanted to spend an inordinate amount of time exploring Daggerfall, you absolutely could do it. There is, as I found out while playing Daggerfall Unity, one tiny little issue with that. First, you gotta get out of that starting cavern. And let me tell you, this game will kill you so often, it's not funny. One of the biggest problems that I had was that you have your sword outstretched. The sword model is the same one, no matter if you're using like a dagger or a sword or a greatsword. It, it seems to be the same model. And, and you'll thrust it outward at an enemy, and you can't really tell if you're actually hitting the enemy or not. And there will be player prompts that suggest that you are missing the enemy, but I still couldn't quite tell you if I was, like, in the hitbox or not. Like, nothing seemed to be connecting for me. So that's frustrating, especially when you're seeing your life total uh, slowly tick down, because that very first rat that you encounter can bite off most of your health bar before you eventually kill it, if you are able to kill it. Once you defeat the rat at the beginning of the game, you might think to yourself, oh, well, you know, this is going to be piece of cake, easy cavern to deal with. But in very open-world Elder Scrolls-y fashion, there are other doors and rooms in this cavern, and some of them take you to very difficult enemies. Monsters that, surprisingly enough, are so hard that you might not actually be able to attack them at all. I came across this uh, flying sprite creature in one of the very first rooms, like you would stumble a cross this room 10 minutes into the game. The game tells me, as I start to attack this flying sprite creature, that my weapon is not good enough to damage it. I have not been given or have had access to a better weapon than this. This is the only weapon I have. It's just like a basic iron sword. I, I, it, I, it's all I got. And now they're apparently telling me that I have to have a certain level of weapon, like a steel weapon, just to deal damage to this creature, which has now basically steamrolled over my health and killed me in a matter of a minute. Escaping this creature is also a little tricky, because it will pursue me for quite a while. I can usually outrun it, but it will slowly creep up on me. I get to another room. There is a thief in this room that doesn't seem to be hostile, but I guess I can attack her. When I do, she pretty much makes short work of me as well. I get this idea in my head that maybe, just maybe, I can utilize the game and its mechanics and have a fun little interaction here. And I take the, the mean monster that I had before... One of the many, many very mean monsters I cannot defeat on my own. And I lead them very skillfully into this area where the thief is to try and get the thief and the monster into a battle. And surprisingly enough, Daggerfall allows me to do that. Pit my enemies against each other while I stand in a corner and laugh maniacally. Until, of course, one of them gets killed, and it is indeed the thief in this scenario, and the monster that I was trying to get past then comes up to me, and I'm still having trouble defeating it. 
Now, I can kind of get through that and rest once I get to a place where there aren't any monsters, which it seems like they're around every single corner. And I start to think to myself as I'm going through this cavern that things might be getting a little bit better. Okay, I've gotten a little bit of experience now and I'm feeling a little bit more confident. And you know what? I might just be able to figure out how this game works. Now I'm really getting, you know, the flow down. And I think that right until I come to like the um, the main hall and there are skeletons. And then I think to myself, maybe I can run past them. And I run past them into this big cavernous like altar piece. And I think to myself, ho ho, I will just run past all of my obstacles until you get to something like a dead end and they all catch up to you and they kill you again. I died a lot of times in this cavern, folks. So I'm in this cavern and I frankly don't know what I'm supposed to do, because I can't tell if I'm hitting anything. It seems like I'm just missing 90% of the strikes that I try. There are things in this cave that I can't even hit. There are dangers behind every passageway. I got a bow at a certain point, but none of my arrows seem to do anything. So I'm basically inept at literally achieving anything at this point. And then I realize, I guess I'm just going to have to try to run past every single obstacle and enemy I face and figure out how to get out of this cave. And eventually, thankfully, I did. I stumbled upon the exit to this cavern and out into the magical land of Daggerfall I went to be greeted to this massive landscape. And the second that I did that, I thought I would open up the map. And something interesting happened when I did so. What I was greeted with was every single location on every single continent that was already revealed to me. Literally, I could fast travel to entire different regions of this place. And I wouldn't really have to explore that area at all. It's been laid out. All the towns, all the dungeons, all the houses, all the outposts, everything. It's already on the map. And I found that weird, right? It's just a weird thing because one of the things that I really liked about Elder Scrolls games from Morrowind to Oblivion to Skyrim was that I was discovering these locations. I found them. I actually did the exploration and I uncovered them. But Daggerfall like, just says, yeah, here's everything that we have on the map. And then tells you that you can fast travel there. But they do fast travel a little bit different in this game. What they do instead of just clicking on a thing saying, do you want to travel here and you go, they ask you if you want to travel cautiously or recklessly, they ask you if you want to stay at inns or if you want to just hoof it the entire way, if you're taking transportation, etc. Some of these things will obviously cost money and some of them will increase the amount of time that it takes in order to get from point A to point B. And then you are off to the races, but you might get stopped and have to deal with an encounter, like spiders that are out in the woods. The problem, of course, is that, again, you are but a weak little scrub, and the spiders will kill you very, very quickly. So, again, my number one strategy was to just hoof it as fast as I possibly can in the opposite direction, and hope that my stamina kept up with me. And then when I was far enough away, go into my fast travel again and attempt to get to the city once more. Of course, once you actually get to the city, there are some more problems that befall you pretty quickly, mostly figuring out how to get around. This is before the time of map markers and, you know, waypoints that you could put onto a map. You just kind of have to figure it out for yourself and go through your journal to figure out, uh, you know, who you're supposed to talk to, what dialogue you're supposed to choose, and it can be counterintuitive for people who are used to modern games, i.e. me. I found it counterintuitive, and a little bit tricky. 
I also went into some of the stores to see if I could sell some of my old gear, buy some new gear, and I realized that there were some options to do things like maybe steal or sneak. But of course, again, I am but a lowly scrub, and I'm not good at basically anything, and I was caught immediately, and the town guard came, and they killed me, which seemed to be a very common pattern. At this point, I found out something else that was very interesting about Daggerfall, which is that there is indeed a schedule to everything in the game. By which I mean, there are certain places that will be open at certain times. The shops are on a schedule, people will lock themselves in their houses at night, and so you have to be mindful of that when you are going and wait for people to show up at the appropriate time. This is something that we would see in later Elder Scrolls games, but I was really impressed to see that they even had these mechanics in Daggerfall. I also liked that they had a mechanic that I remembered from Morrowind, which was not just that you get better at skills by using them, which is a staple of the Elder Scrolls series, but that I would level up not just whenever I've accrued enough experience by doing things, but literally when I go to sleep and I bank all of my skill, essentially. And that allows me to level up some of my base stats. But ultimately, my time with the game felt far more of a frustration than it felt as fascination. So I tried something. I tried something that is a little cheeky which is mostly that I went to my original save game and I opened up the character text editor and I gave all my stats about a, a 100x boost. Now, the nice thing about this is that now I could actually hit things and uh, eventually they would die. So, already an improvement. And it allowed me to do something I couldn't really do the first time, which is explore that initial cavern. And what I found is that if I had not done those stat boosts, there's no way I would have ever gotten through this cavern. There are literally bears in the cavern at the very start of the game. They are not pulling their punches in this thing. But then when you get into the outer world, you start to realize that you're far better prepared for the challenges that await you, and the increased stamina and health that you have also help out. But I did also have another issue, which is that although I would have absolutely loved to be able to really explore this landscape, again, I know where all the locations already are, and more than that. Daggerfall is one of those examples of a game that becomes so large that you just don't really want to engage in it. I mean, Skyrim felt huge, right? But Daggerfall is a different level of large. And most of the time, there's not a lot in it. Like, sure, you can see the just like hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of locations that they give you, that you can go into. But the space between is just a lot of sprites of trees and bushes and stuff. That's it. It's, it's all it is. It's just big, endless forests and mountains. That's it. I think I'm fine with the size of Elder Scrolls games today. I'm fine with the size of epic RPGs today because it feels like they're far more interesting. Like, there's far more to do. And I will take the smaller landscape for an increased user interface that really allows me to... to guide my experience better so that I can actually tell where things are interact in a more meaningful way with everybody that's there. Daggerfall was a landmark game. It's true. It was very ambitious, very large, and still stands as one of those epic RPGs, like really where epic RPGs take off. The, the blueprint for Elder Scrolls that would come past it.
Was it ambitious? Absolutely. I have heard that you could even, like, buy houses and join guilds and get bank loans and own boats. Uh, apparently, you could even settle legal issues in court. I don't remember a lot of people asking for that particular mechanic in games, but it was a big open sandbox before we were really flooded with big open sandboxes of games. And so at the time, it was revolutionary. Looking at it today, I... yeah, I, I think it's just too difficult to play now. It's too hard to wrap your head around what you're supposed to even do when you get out into this world. Give me Morrowind or Oblivion or Skyrim any day. I, I, I just, I'd rather have that experience. The experience of Elder Scrolls is really important to me. Not how big it is. Not if I can get a bank loan. The truth is, I'm probably never going to get to that because... I just don't have the engagement of the game itself to get me to those points to experience it. And that's a big issue for it. Now, having said that, I will suggest that if somebody wanted to try and recreate Daggerfall with modern hardware, like we got the Unreal Engine 5 stuff coming out and the near photorealistic stuff that they're building with that. If someone wanted to try and remake Daggerfall from the ground up using that kind of hardware, which is able to do some procedural generation in much the same way you know, Daggerfall did way back when, but with far richer tool sets and modern hardware, and could really build something modern with the same framework, I would love to play that. I would love to play that, to make it feel more impactful when I do fighting, to make the scripting when I talk to characters more like the dialogue trees of more recent RPGs. If they could do that, then I think that people would get a new appreciation for a game that was, frankly, ahead of its time, but that just doesn't work for modern audiences. And by modern audiences, I mean me. It doesn't work for me. It's at this point that I would tell you about other games that I would recommend instead of Daggerfall. The thing is, it would probably just be other Elder Scrolls games. Although I think if we were talking about trying to create more of that open world experience of exploration with these just giant, vast worlds to explore, the closer modern-day analog to Daggerfall would probably be something like No Man's Sky, right? Because it's this big, vast, massive open world that doesn't have so much of a curated experience, where you have lots of different mechanics that many players might not even necessarily engage in, but that lends itself to exploration and just going out into the wide open spaces that the game presents you. Yeah, I think No Man's Sky is actually probably closer in, in function. But if I were to give you uh, a recommendation, I would say Morrowind. I think Morrowind holds up better, although I haven't played it recently. I think it holds up better under modern standards because it was like the first 3D Elder Scrolls game, truly, like, with modern hardware, as we might think of it, and had a uh, a richness to the world that it, it put you in. It's obviously a lot smaller than Daggerfall, but it doesn't feel that way when you're playing. Morrowind still feels vast, even though it is far smaller than Oblivion or Skyrim and definitely smaller than Arena and Daggerfall. All right, so although it's very difficult to get out of the cavern in Daggerfall, it is not difficult to get out of this cave that you're in right now. All you have to do is take the funicular that's over in the corner. That's right, I replaced the minecart 
It's a it's a funicular now. There's a bit of lore building for you. It's you know why they call it a funicular though, because it's it's fun for Nick and you, Lars. Now I'm wondering why do they actually call it a funicular? Funicular, a cable railway ascending a mountain, especially one in which an ascending car counterbalances a descending car. I guess that's not a funicular. I'm sorry. It's just a rebranded minecart. I really should have checked on this before I renamed it. Oh, you're... You're already up there. Well...